and welcome to a very spooky Halloween Tilgate Tales. My name's Richard, and today's story is all about a monster that threatens Tilgate Park. Now, all stories have a villain and a hero, and our hero today is called Tyson the Harvest Mouse. Let's meet him, shall we, in today's story. Are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. Tyson the heroic harvest mouse narrowed his beady eyes. He looked to the left and round to the right and scanned the inky skies. I know you're out there, creature, Tyson said to the dark. Soon I will destroy you, me, defender of Tilgate Park. He thought himself an adventurer, so daring and debonair, fighter of fearless foes and rescuer of mouses fair. Please give up, said Dwayne the mouse, who was tired of staying up late watching his friend with his nonsense of monsters that he said they would see if they wait. I heard its mighty wings, Tyson said, and its call like a terrible shriek. It's coming to eat us, he loomed over Duane, who flinched and let out a squeak. Don't be ridiculous, you're making it up. There's no monsters, why can't you see? But who will defend the zoo, Tyson asked. It seems it falls to me. He felt a surge of strength. He was the bravest mouse, and he knew it. Well, don't bring the monster back here, Dwayne replied, and don't keep us up while you do it. I'll make a shield from a nut, Tyson said, and a sword from a piece of a reed. For a helmet, I'll use an acorn, and for a snack, I'll take this seed. Then into the darkness I will go, and though the danger is great, I shall not return till I've slaughtered the beast, or until it gets really late. Poor Dwayne's terrified, Tyson thought. He's just too proud to say it. He'll wish he were as brave as me once I find the beast and slay it. Outside of his enclosure, the air was quiet and still, and he set off on his dangerous quest, fearless, courageous, until... He saw how dark it had gotten. But what hero needs the sun? I can still do battle in darkness. The war's only just begun. Hey, I know you're out there! Tyson started to shout, though behind his squeak was starting to creep the tiniest feeling of doubt. He could barely see ahead now, and he felt his way with his paw. He crawled and inched and stumbled till he couldn't see any more. He shrank back disappointedly in the silence of the night. Perhaps there was no monster, and Duane, in fact, was right. It was just my imagination. There's no enemies to attack. And now I'm lost and far from home, with no way to get back. What kind of hero gets lost in the dark? Pretty stupid one, I reckon. He sat still amongst the fluttering wind, but then thought, wait a second. There is no wind, he thought. Well, that's the noise I heard. It's fast and sounds like flapping, like a rippling flag or bird. And then he heard a high-pitched sound, like a chirp mixed with a screech, which cut through the air around him. First near, then far from reach, and then again much closer. It was some kind of high-pitched song. Then Tyson was sent flying back by a beat of wings so strong. He clawed at the ground to stop himself, but tripped and flipped on his back. The chirping stopped above his head, and he strained to see in the black. There, the monster, here it was, hovering, watching, staring. This is your chance, thought Tyson, to be bold and brave and daring. Say your last, flying beast! The monster simply frowned, clapped its wings and somersaulted, and landed on the ground. It was an awkward animal, with great big leathery wings. Its legs were bent from back to front, and with claws for gripping things. Fur covered its body and head, for its wings were more like skin. Please don't shout, the creature said, with a voice that was high and thin. I don't mean you any harm. Don't lie to me, and now it's time for me to stop you. Wait, you can see me? How? The monster smiled happily. It's a special skill I've got. I hear everything that's around me, so you weren't hard to spot. I sing a song, and the sound bounces off something back to my ear. I make a map of what's all around. That's how I knew you were here. Then you should see, Tyson began, that this park is protected from monsters like you, by heroes like me. I'm a bat, the monster corrected. 
Tyson had heard about bats from his mum, and that they were villains was clear. He knew they sucked blood and flew in the sky, a creature of evil and fear. A vampire, breathed in Tyson. You'll not suck my blood, he cried. I'll keep this zoo safe from you. I eat insects, the bat replied. Tyson ignored his likely lie. How exciting, I'm going to stake you. Are you lost? asked the bat, ignoring him back. Is there somewhere I can take you? Tyson scowled. You'd take me home? Why would you help me, bat? Bats are evil creatures, come on, every mouse knows that. The mice are wrong, said the bat, with his wings firmly crossed. You're just too proud to admit it. Now tell me, are you lost? Heroes don't get lost, said Tyson, but he knew it was the truth. But could the bat be trusted? Come on, he needed proof. I fly by your home, said the bat, every night and never eat you. Tyson thought about it. Then I guess I don't need to defeat you. I hoped you were a dragon, with fiery breath and scales, and our battles would be legend, the stuff of myth and tales. But if not, then yes please, take me home. Thanks, that'd be best. I'm clearly not cut out for going on a heroic quest. The bat thought for a second. You know what heroes need? To soar into battle on a mighty flying steed. The bat's wings touched his shoulders, and it whispered, You've been knighted. Now arise, the little mouse. And Tyson did, delighted. The bat spread his wings out wide and took off through the dark, whipping through the woods and paths and out across the park. And satisfied that all was safe and having enjoyed his flight, the bat took Tyson home to bed and Tyson said good night. Now some will think that heroes just put villains to their end, but better heroes see a foe and turn them to a friend. Who is who in this story? It's hard to say for sure, but stay up one night in Tilgate Park and watch those heroes soar. Did you like that story? What did you think of Tyson? I think his heart was in the right place, he had good intentions, but I don't think he went the right way about it, to be honest. You can't just assume someone you don't know isn't going to be nice. He kind of assumed that the bat was going to be a villain, but actually he turned out to be pretty helpful. Bats are fascinating creatures. All the facts in that story about bats are true. Echolocation is the name we give to when bats sing, and it bounces off objects and they build up a map of the way around them. They use really high-pitched sounds that we actually can't hear, but if you get a bat detector, which is a little gadget that looks like a little box, uh, you can actually hear the bats calling and you can find out what bats are around you. Now they can be expensive, but around this time of year, lots of places do bat walks, where you can go into a local patch like a park, like Tilgate Park, and uh, go on a bat walk and see what uh, bats you can find. Now it's really cool, there's loads of different species in the UK, and uh, although you need to wrap up warm, it's often quite cold, it's a really fun thing to do. Now I hope you have a very happy Halloween, and if you do go on a bat walk, let us know, and let us know what you find. Now hopefully we'll see you again very soon for another story here at Tilgate Tales. Goodbye!